guys, welcome to Smooth Workshop. Right, styrene fanatics, something a little bit different. Um, I fell into my games workshop, local one in Stirling, not quite so local, but I fell into it. Um, a lot of folk have been putting Warhammer stuff up, so I've went and got myself a nice little Warhammer kit here that I'm going to do a little review on. Uh, it's a Space Marine Razorback model. Uh, I don't play uh, Warhammer 40k. But I do like the model subject itself uh, and fancied building it up. It's a reasonable little kit. Uh, kit pack number um, is 48 21. Um, it's on a 28mm scale. Um, it was brought out in 2003, was the Rebox, which was updated with new parts. I'm not quite sure when it came out before that. But uh, it's listening, it's 2003 as a rebox with updated parts. Now, a lot of people actually play the Warhammer 40k games. Um, rather than playing games on the computer, there's just going to be a wee show. I'm going to do a review on this next, which is uh, the little characters that go with it. This is uh, Space Marines, Tactical Squad. So you've got little figurines with different armaments. And you play the game using dice, and uh, the new um, number eight rules are coming out where you use tape measures rather than all the wee plastic things. So you'll say, like, I'm going to attack that one with this one, and you throw your dice and all that, and then each one has a certain damage. So it's an old-fashioned sort of tactical, almost a board game, but they play it on big dioramas and things like that. So that's what all the Warhammer thing's about now. <clears throat> As I say, I like the subject matter, and they're built in styrene, so you can glue them together, paint them. Um, As I say, I'll do a review on the figures shortly, but uh, it appeals to me. I'm, I don't think I've played a game, but I've, I'm going to try, even though um, I don't know all the lore behind it. I like the Space Marines, so I'm going to endeavour, when I build it up, to do it in the proper Space Marine colours, with, the, with the, the proper... Um, insignias and all that things on it so this is the front box art uh, it's a lovely graphic there on the side we have just basically telling you it's a Space Marine Razorback um, it's made by Citadel and just a, a, a top view of the tank there on the end just another view and this side it has a vertical picture just another, excuse me, another another cutaway. Now, I do believe that you can build, there's another troop carrier, um, which doesn't have the big gun on it. It's the same base chassis as this. But we'll, we'll, we'll open the box. It's not a complex kit. Uh, as I say, I went into the games workshop and bought this. It was £25. So, it's a reasonably priced kit. In the box we get instructions. Right, you can build the Rhino, that's the other one. As I say, I don't know this, but uh, it's a Rhino. Uh, you can build that from this kit. All the parts are in there for the Rhino. And the Razorback. Now, I do believe when you're actually playing the game, the Razorback has higher points damage or something like that. As I say, I don't play the game, but it does give you enough to pick from either one of the two variants what I would say is a Rhino is slightly cheaper you can buy that as a standalone kit but the Razorback is the same overall body I'll go into instructions in a wee minute let's see what else is in the box we have some sprues and they're in a grey styrene one two three four sprues and some decals with all the various uh, the white balance might go because a lot of these are white with them being the the ultramarines or space marines whatever you want to call them um, they're all white like Omega shapes and then you've got your company numbers uh, tactical assault devastator veteran that must be their ranks and they are water slide decals and from what I've heard they're really really good 
So there are some decals for it. Let's have a look at some of the sprues. Um, right, let's go for the main big, the big tub. I'll try to see where I've put my steel rule here. Can I see it? Can I see it? Nah, I've not got it to hand, but they, they say it's a 28mm, did I say? Yeah, 28mm kit, so all the figurines are in 28mm. So we'll have a look at this sprue. Um, <clears throat> maybe get a better idea of size with my hand. Okay, so that's my hand. I've got quite big hands. It's oh one and a quarter, two and a quarter. It's about four or five inches long. And we have here one side with a little wheels on it and a side door. And then we have the two side doors, and this looks one of the tail pieces. Now the tracks are glued together. Uh, I am led to believe that you can glue them together and fit them on later, after you've painted them and weathered them. So I'm led to believe that. The sprue gates don't look too bad. They do taper off. Um... So they're not too chunky, so we should be able to snip them off easy enough and dress them up. Um, another part for the back door here. The other side, this looks like a top, a gun hatch. It goes on the top of the main upper part of the tank. So it's very, very chunky plastic. Obviously the guys that do all the, the wargaming in these are moving about with their hands and all that. So it is quite a substantially thick, uh, rugged looking plastic kit. So that's the first sprue. Are there any markings on it? Ah right, it's got Games Workshop 2006. So that's possibly when this first came out. What did I say earlier? 2000 and 2003 it was reboxed. This one's a 2006. And it's got quite a nice level of detail. I mean... It's not like a high detail tank or anything. These are just little space marine vehicles. Uh, any ejector pin marks are all on the rear. There doesn't appear to be any on the actual facings. And there doesn't appear to be any flash. It's really quite nice and crisp. You can even see the wee windscreen wipers in there. Um, for the guys driving the tank. That'll be the front plate. That sits where the windows are. So they've got wee windscreen wipings. I think that's a T, so they are marking the sprues with a number. So that's that sprue. But there isn't a lot to this kit. I don't think it'll take much build up or anything. Um, it's more for the fun of. I want to do some space stuff, so. Right, oh, there is another tub here. Ah, right, okay. So we've got the other side half. So one will be for the razor back. And the other one will be for the Rhino. And there's the, the base. So, although you get two extra sides, you only get one base and one top. Hmm, that might give me an idea for scratch building something later. And this looks like the other track. This is a back door that I think the teeth hinge together and it's actually articulated. And there's a wee window piece for the front. And... This just looks like a top piece with a wee blaster and a sight scope and that on it. As I say, lovely crisp detail on it. It's very nicely moulded. Um, again, has this got any dates or anything? Oh, this is Sprue B. So not a lot to it. We have another sprue here with... This is 2001. So the sprues are from different years then, so... Yeah, the first two were for 2006, this is 2001, so we've got the main hatch, uh, top part of the gun, the big gun, the big laser, the blaster, bolter, whatever you will call it. I don't know all the terminology yet. Looks like a bit of an ammo case. Little extras like tow ropes, like you would get in a tank kit. Um, this looks like the, the razor part, the teeth at the front here. As I say, it's all really chunky, sturdy uh, polystyrene plastic. There's a nice level of detail on the guns and that, so they should pick up a nice wee 
oil wash or a wee null oil wash um, from Citadel paint range. But yeah, pretty simple, straightforward. That's another sprue. And the final sprue here. Sprue C, what date's on that one? Nothing on that one. And we're into all sorts of hatches. Um, looks like smoke launchers or wee mortar smoke grenades. Uh, another type of gun and turret. Just nice wee bits of detail on them that would pick up a wee bit of dry brushing and stuff like that. That actually looks like a little head. I'll need to look at the instructions. Maybe you can have the driver peeking out or something like that. I'm not quite sure. Because it looks like there's an upper half of a torso and shoulder pads and arms. I wonder if... and that looks like partial legs. I wonder if there's actually, I've not looked at instructions yet, I wonder if there's actually a wee guy you can have on the top of this, an extra man. In which case that's pretty cool. And the light and everything. So there's not a lot to the sprues, there's four sprues. Um, it's all really sturdy plastic. Polystyrene, so it'll go together with traditional um, model makers glues. Now I'm just going to pull my camera across back to here again. And have a quick look at the instructions. So, yeah, it's telling you you can build two variants, the Rhino or the Razorback. Uh, if you're doing the Rhino, you do steps 1 to 6. And if you do the Razorback, you're doing 1 to 5 and 7 to 8. So that's all clearly mapped out. Black and white pictures. Um, first page. Basically telling you all the callouts. Now, because I've not built one of these before, the symbols are slightly different to the Tamiya kits I normally make. So there's a dry fit. Paint before assembly, do not glue, choices of parts, and they give you detailed views. Suggest some glues to use it, but any poly glue would do. Uh, sprue cutters, they say a mold line remover, but you can do that with sandy sticks and um, a craft knife. So we'll just, maybe if I pull my camera around this way, it might help you guys better. But I don't have a zoom on this, so I do apologise. Um, so... In the first part, you've got the outer hull and the inner hull um, with the track wheels on. You glue them together and it's obviously the side sponsons, I think they're called. That's this bit and this bit. That's about the tracks run inside. So you've got that one for, for the left side and that one for the right side. And it's telling you to build up the tracks and put them on there. I'm going to see if it's possible to build the tracks up, let them set. And then see if they pop out so that I can paint them and then pop them back in later when I go to build it. So that's that bit. Um, I'm just changing my light a bit. Hopefully you'll see better. Um, next stage instructions. Uh, so you've got the two sides built up. It tells you to put the floor pan in and the main bulkhead and the side doors. But uh, the rear looks like the troop loading platform. Uh, instructs you not to glue it so that must pivot and come out so that's quite cool so you can load all your wee troops up in the back and uh, take them to the battlefield where they will disembark and kill all the other factions now this vehicle obviously um, this is saying Space Marine Razorback there are different colour variants for them um, for all the different ones and as I say, probably go into it more when I go into the actual troops themselves about the different colours. There's a red one for like the Crimson Fists and there's a yellow one for... I don't know all the names yet. As I say, I don't play it. I just like the the, the, the actual um, the model. So after you've got all that glued together, I'm telling you to put the, the top part, which goes over the top of the tracks with, with two turret openings big square part at the back uh, to get the front on and then the armour shield so I think if you were wanting to detail up the windows you would need to paint all them up and then put that on but I think I'll just put that on and spray it all you're, you're, not, you're just going to see a dark hole really you're not going to get that much detail on it 
so that's the front and the armour part there and then it details you putting the light pods on and this is what it should look like after you've completed that procedure so it basically goes do that, do that, do that, it should look like this and it's all uh, photocad design so it's really clear to follow um, right we've got the little gear wheels here which means that there are options for what you want to put in the hatches so one looks like just a closed hatch uh, with either a spotlight on or a radar on or some little mortar on it, a smoke flare on it which would look like that you put these bits together and it looks like that or a, a double bolt gun would that be right and it's telling you not to glue parts together so it swivels up and down um, so yeah so that's hatches and then for the other hatch we have even more options. Ah, there is a little man in it. Ha ha. Right, that's interesting. Now, is this for five? Ah, wait now, five, five. If I go back to the front, it tells you. I've not really read these through, so you're reading them with me. One to six is Rhino. One to five is Razorback. Right, so it, it does go for the Razorback. So you can either have the option of a little hatch that opens, uh, well, a wee man pop, yeah, or a wee man popping up, and it just gives you the head that goes into this wee part here. Um, I don't know if you can make it out with my camera, I can't really zoom. Um, so that's just a plain hatch, you know, up on these parts here. Or there's a hatch open with a head popping out. Or there's a hatch closed with a, a double bolt gun on it. Or you can have the hatch open with the double bolt gun and the little man, little character firing it. Hmm, that's interesting. Good thing about all these, when I, when I looked at these hatches, it looks as if you, can do, you could possibly paint them up um, off the body and just stick them in. So, you can stick them in later, if you want to swap things about. Right, that might be something I'll experiment with. Um, right, it then goes on, if you're wanting to build the Rhino, um, you just close over the back, and it gives you the option, there'd be a gun, a double bolt gun on one side and just a hatch on the other, if you're building the Rhino. But we are not going to be building a rhino, we are going to be building a razorback. Uh, and it, it shows you there what the completed rhino looks like. Or the completed rhino with the wee guy out the top. Now when we're going to the razorback, the difference between the rhino and the razorback is the razorback has a big heavy weapon platform on the back. And the good thing is it tells you not to glue it so you can turn all this round. So basically, this, this is looking like snap fit stuff. You have... Uh, both both barrels or both bolt guns going onto a hinge uh, which it's telling you not to glue um, or this looks like a laser weapon possibly you can you can choose either those or the laser weapon and then they mount onto the hatch uh, this, oh there's three weapons then oh no maybe no 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 no, no. right okay the magazine with ammunition actually slides in through the hatch and then there's a cover goes on top if it's the bolt guns or the laser type weapons. As I say, I'm not used to the folklore of this. Uh, so basically it's saying, you know, put glue the top hatch on but don't glue this turret onto the top depending on what gun you're wanting on top of it so you can spin it round and that's what it should look like at the end. Instructions really straightforward. Um, and then it's on to installing whatever hatches it is you want onto the front so obviously I'm going to leave those three parts off till then because I want to paint the main body of it and then you can also stick on the uh, the front razor part uh, I'll get a look at that when I'm building it because it'd be easier to spray that all the blue first uh, and then do the metallic and the washes on that and then stick that on afterwards and then there's some optional accessories now there's, there's a crest that goes in the front this part here um, it looks like a logo or whatever on the side, a banner. Uh, you've got optional tow ropes there and it looks like optional um, 
ammo cans, and that's them all detailed down there. Place them on as desired. Um, then it should look like this picture here. Hopefully you're picking it up. Or it might look like this one with the lasers on it. And this is looking basically like that's the build. And it is. And then on the back, for the actual gamers, it tells you special rules, like if a rhino's immobilised and in subsequent turns it may attempt to repair itself instead of shooting, blah blah blah, and you've got to roll a certain dice. And this is where all the gaming options comes in, so it tells you what unit type it is, tank, transport. Um... Options may take items from a space marines vehicle equipment list. I mean, this is all in the game inside. This doesn't really uh, interest me. Um, I mean, it's got your armor, your BSF, SR, and HP, so that's health points and things like that. Um, details all that for you playing in the game. So, basically, if you've got a razor back, its value, total points value is worth 55. This is more for the Warhammer gamers. And the Rhino's only worth 35 points. None the wiser, but as far as a model goes, uh, it's very well made, very crisp detail, uh, very clear instructions, CAD instructions, uh, water slide decals, uh, nice amount of detail on the kit, very simple to go together, and uh, I'll enjoy painting it and weathering it up and stuff like that. So that is the review of um, Citadel's Space Marine Razorback from their Warhammer 40k series. Part number 48-21, uh, 28mm scale, and as I say, it was reboxed in 2003 with updated parts, and as we can see, there's some from 2001 and some from 2006, and uh, it looks like being a fun little build, so I hope you enjoy this, it's something a bit different from the normal aircraft and armour and motorbikes and stuff, I'm fancy trying a wee bit of sci-fi stuff, and um, especially with the figures, it's quite calm in painting figures, so next review I'll do, I'll actually go on to um, the Space Marine Tactical Squad. Um, so I'll go and edit this, and then I'll do a wee review of this, and the detail on these guys is awesome. You know, for little 28mm figures, absolutely fantastic. But that's my review of the Razorback, hope you liked it. As I say, I got it from... Games Workshop, it was £25, which isn't bad for for what you're getting, to be quite honest. So, I'll do a build video of this when I go to do it. Um, it might not be like you guys do it, that do all your gaming, but I have bought myself all my little Citadel paints, so you've got all your weird things like Retributor Armour and Lead Belcher and Macagra Blue, and then I've got my Null Loyals and Agrax Earthshades. Uh, I'm going to try out the Dragon Drakenhof Nightshade as well on this one. I'll let you know how the paints are to put through an airbrush and all that, but I'll, I'll do a review on the actual Citadel paints as a separate thing and how to apply them when I actually go into the build. So that's something to look forward to, but this is just a kit review. And, as I say, Terry from Smooth Workshop, hope you enjoyed it. Something different. Warhammer. Speak to you later. Bye.